This is Laura from The Good, The Bad, and The Tarot, and I just wanted to do a short little intro here. Um, normally, for those of you who are my old subscribers, and even for those of you who are new, um, you may already know that I do my love forecasts uh, for the entire month. But for the month of October, I was out sick for the past two weeks and have been recovering from an upper respiratory infection. And thankfully, I am on the mend with that. So um, I just uh, could not uh, give up doing the love forecast. I absolutely adore doing love forecasts. And so what I'm going to be doing is a little bit of an amending to that. Um, these will be a mid-month love forecast for all of the signs going in order of uh, birth date, so Libra, and then in descending order from most likes to fewest likes from last month's love forecast. Now, some of you may already know this, but my love forecasts really do extend throughout the month. They'll take approximately 30 days or more to uh, develop. So uh, things may still be happening uh, throughout the month of November. You may find that uh, from the beginning of the forecast until the end of the the prediction for the outcome card, you're looking uh, at approximately 30 days. So uh, there may be some overlap there with my November love forecast, but just keep that in mind. Um, so by the time that you view this reading, uh, it will be uh, around the middle of October, going into the middle of October. So technically it is a mid-month forecast. But because my forecasts take approximately 30 days uh, to develop, um, I just wanted to let you give you a heads up on that and let you know that uh, some of the things that I'm going to be talking about are going to take uh, time for them to happen. So uh, just to be patient with that. And uh, thank you so much for your well wishes and for your patience uh, while I recover. I really do appreciate it and sending you lots of love and light. Hello Libra. For your love forecast today, I'm going to be using the Steampunk Tarot as my primary tarot deck. I will also be casting the runes during the reading and pulling a an outcome card or I guess an oracle message for you at the end of the reading using the wisdom of <coughs> excuse me, the wisdom of the hidden realms oracle. So I just wanted to let you know those are the items I'm going to be using for your divination today. Hello Aries, how are you all doing? This is your mid-month love forecast. This is for my Aries suns, moons, and risings, and those on the cusp. Let's get into it. Spirit, what are the love messages and energies that you have for the sign of Aries? This is for all of my Aries suns, moons, and risings, and those on the cusp. What will be so for Aries for their mid-October love reading? What are the messages and energies that you have for the sign of Aries? Aries sun, Aries moon, and Aries rising. They're saying it's okay to cut the cards. I have your 10 cards down. I'm going to be casting the runes today as part of your overall reading. What are the messages, Spirit, that you have for the sign of Aries? What do they need to know regarding their love lives? Oh, a lot of them came out. All right. You have three runes that are face up. And the rest that are face down, actually four runes face up. The ones that are face down, I don't read those. Those are the unknowns. Some people that cast the runes read those. They'll just turn them over and read them. 
but uh, in accordance with um, some other ancient culture, some other people who don't read them that way, I follow that tradition. Let's take a look at your cards. Okay, the Eight of Swords in reverse, crossed by the Tower. Okay. What comes below, below you is the Seven of Swords. And there's a little rune here. In the recent past, you have the Five of Wands in reverse. What comes above you is the Sun. In the near future, you have Justice. In the position of how you see yourself, you have the Knight of Wands in reverse, which is my Aries card. In your environment, this is also how your significant other or the person you think about the most may be viewing you or dealing with you. They have the Four of Pentacles. Your hopes and fears are the lovers. Your outcome is the Ace of Wands in reverse. All right, Aries. Let me zoom out here. Let's talk about your cards. Excuse me. My voice comes and goes. It's just like this. Um, you walk into the middle of October with the Eight of Swords in reverse, which suggests to me that you've gotten yourself or released yourself from a situation that you no longer are going to remain a victim. And there's also the sense of freeing, freeing yourself, freedom, or release. Okay, so I, I very much like this card in the reverse, and it's also saying that you're getting rid of any negative thinking that might have been previously clouding your viewpoint or enabling, enabling some kind of victim mentality. This is saying you're reversing that. You're going to let yourself go. You're going to set yourself free. Your challenge is the tower, which is very interesting because the tower represents a couple of major themes here. One, an epiphany. Two, um, it can represent a very uh, surprising moment or a separation. Um, now, we are talking about love here, so to relate this back to your love life, your challenge is um, the complete and utter destruction of something uh, that was built on either an unstable foundation, so remember the onion scenario where we peel all of the layers of the onion back until we get to the very core of the relationship, and that is where the truth is. Once this tower comes down, we can peel the onion down to its base and realize how we can rebuild this on a better foundation. So in other words, your challenge is the dismantling of all ego systems, all beliefs and structures that were held to be true, but were really based on a lie or uh, an unsteady foundation. So your challenge is to let this tower come down, to, to allow this separation to, to happen, to... Um, Set yourself free in some respect here. Now we have Nothi's Constraint coming up in the little cross in the middle. And specifically next to the Eight of Swords Reverse. Um, this talks about needs, needs and constraints, things that um, can hold us back. Uh, needs that were not met or unmet needs. You know, think about what a constraint is when we're designing something, when we're building something, there are certain things that need to take place in order for us to meet the regulations, in order for us to meet the other person's, you know, the clients, uh, fulfill their requirements, so to speak. So here I feel like we're talking about needs that haven't been met or that need to be met. Constraints, systems, requirements, things that 
uh, are taking place right now um, in order to meet your needs, in order to overcome a constraint, we're having a tower situation. Again, in this position, it's what's helping or hurting you. I see this in the positive, both of these cards. One is talking about releasing yourself and the other is saying that the challenge this month is this separation, is this moment where um, it can feel chaotic, yes, but it can also be a wonderful thing because in the moment where the, uh, the ego shatters, where the balloon is burst, that's where we come down to the truth of the matter. That's where we can start to say, I have needs that need to be met. There's something here that is going on that is not allowing me to express myself or to, to be who I am. And in order for that to happen, I've got to get out of this situation. I've got to let this tower come down. Now, for some of you, this is a very big moment, okay, um, in, a, in a relationship. And it can really be anything. It can be giving birth to a child. It could be moving house. It can be something that is so, uh, sets a milestone for you in your life. As though you look back at this moment in time and it is a marker for you. It is a real milestone for you. Okay, so this is a big moment. And in the recent past, you have the Five of Wands in reverse, which is really, we're talking about getting ourselves out of the way of competition. We don't want to be involved in the petty hassles and struggles. There's a lack of tension here because what it's saying is that you're removing yourself from any kind of uh, competitive situation. Now, for example, um, a lot of people find themselves in a situation when they're dating people and it's frustrating because, you know, you, you want to compete for that person's love and affection. They want to compete for your love and affection, but sometimes it can just be too much of a hassle. And so this is saying that if we're looking at a rubber band situation here, where when the rubber band is stretched, you have that tension between the couple. And with the card in reverse, we're talking about a slackening of that rope and the tension is dispersed. Um, now the wands falling down to the ground means that there's an end to the fighting. The couple or the, the person in love does not want to engage in that anymore. And so it can indicate in the recent past that there was a warming of those emotions but yet still a wanting to kind of stay away from the competition, from being involved in something that was creating petty hassles and squabbles, struggles. And um, so what puts you here with the Eight of Swords in reverse is the Seven of Swords, which is my card of deception, cheating, leaving, doing things that uh, fulfill one's intentions or motives on a purely uh, self-driven basis. So this is self-interest, motivated by self-interest. Um, I do see someone kind of getting away with something here, doing something under the radar. It's as if to say, I'm getting myself out of this situation it's creating this type of moment, okay? I'm going to have my needs met. I'm going to do that by releasing myself from this. And what put me here is either someone cheated on me or I am motivated by self-interest and then that's why I'm leaving. And uh, it's interesting because we have the Gabo marriage here, which can also represent a commitment. And when I see it with the Seven of Swords, 
It's someone leaving a committed relationship. It's someone cheating on a committed relationship. It can be a lot of different scenarios, but um, there's an omnipotence to this card. I feel as though it's both an overt and a deceptive action all at once. Um, but it's telling me with the tower right here that there's going to be something surprising, something shocking, something separating, something that breaks this monotony, something that breaks the silence, and it's creating space, just as if you had an explosion. That explosion creates space. It creates a new, a new area around it. And swords are mental energy. We're dealing with mental strategies, the way we think about things. You know, are we tiptoeing away from something? Is someone tiptoeing away from us? But we're getting ourselves out of the way. We're getting ourselves out of the situation. That's what I'm seeing. And really, <coughs> you're likely to be thinking quite positively <coughs> about that. With the sun card, there's a lot of clarity that comes from this, a lot of happiness, a lot of joy. It's as if you are like seeing the light. All of a sudden you see the light. And this is a great place, placement for this card uh, with the sun up here. And it's kind of like telling me that this is a new day for you. This is a new way of thinking. It's a new way of being in the world. You know. Um... Moving into the near future, this is one to two weeks into the future, um, we have Justice, and Justice is coming up with Feihu Wealth. Very nice. This is great for contracts and negotiations, marriage, um, but it also says that in terms of your status, your wealth, um, that's very good this month. And I really feel like the cards are falling where they're supposed to, where they may. Um, really, this is saying that for many of you, if someone has done you wrong in the past, here or here, then what you're going to see is retribution in your favor. Because what goes around comes around. And this is very much a card of karma. Karmic justice coming to you with Feihu wealth. Um, your financial security, your contracts, your negotiations, your legal decisions, all of that coming in your favor. We have Isa. Isa falls before justice. Before we reach this point, there is a standstill. There is a moment in time where things are frozen. And remember, justice is very dispassionate. Justice looks at the cold, hard facts. Justice looks at logic and will not be swayed by opinion. So, uh, but remember that before we hit here, we are looking at a situation where it seems as though things are at a standstill. Okay? Um, because Isa is icicle, which means frozen. And this can even really represent... A dispassionate demeanor, an icy demeanor, a feeling of simply doing the, you know, abiding by the law, um, an eye for an eye, you know, letting sort of karma play its, its game here. And it will. And it looks like it's coming in your favor. How you see yourself, Aries, you see yourself the way that I see you, Aries, which is just yourself. Um, which kind of echoes the sentiments of the sun. I think of the Knight of Wands in reverse as actually your card. So you're likely to be fairly in your element uh, towards the middle of the month and going into the end of the month. Um, I like with Justice Upright, Justice being the sign of Libra, the scales, it suits you well. 
I see you being in your element, Lib or in your element Aries. Um, yes, some of you may be dealing with a Libra. It's highly possible. Um, now, in your environment, this is how your significant other may be viewing you or dealing with you or the person you think about the most. We have the Four of Pentacles. So, someone around you could be very stingy. They may be uh, not opening up or feel like they're, you know, um, feel like not letting you go. It can be a lot of different things, but this is in the position of how they're going to be viewing you or dealing with you, in which case you could be saving money. You could also be um, unwilling to budge from a particular point of view, unwilling to open up. You may be conservative in terms of your emotions. You may be unwilling to let go of someone or, t or may think that you're, you know, too good looking, too, too good for that person and that you're just going to save your energy for someone better. And that's how they're going to be viewing you and dealing with you. All of those things. And it really depends on your situation because, you know, each card has so many meanings. I really feel like you're just in your element right now, Aries. With your hopes and fears on the lovers, this is a karmic situation. We are dealing with a choice here. And I think that your hope is for a blessing here, for some kind of passionate reunion. It can be, I mean, the lovers is, it really is 50-50. It can go either way. Um, this is a very serious relationship card. It, it's not an ordinary love relationship. This is the kind of relationship that is of a soulmate quality. You know that this person is near. You can sense when they're near. You have psychic thoughts about them. Um, this is a beautiful card in the hopes and fears position. It's a hope. To, it's a calling in of your soulmate, essentially. It's a hope that they're there. It's a hope of a union. It's, it's a hope that the choice is made right. Um, it's the hope that you have the choice still to choose. Um, but again, this is a very sort of heavy card and it, it's not an ordinary love relationship card. It's a very passionate one. Um, it's one that does often require us to choose whether we use our heart, whether we use our head, because seldom do those two kind of create a balance. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Your outcome is the Ace of Wands in reverse. Okay, Doge, shoot the messenger. What I'm seeing here is for some of you, there can be a loss of passion or spark. It may be a bit of a disappointment, like someone doesn't feel turned on anymore by this person or they don't, they aren't getting the, they aren't feeling it, they're not getting the spark. There's something to do with fatigue here or motivation. All right, that's what I'm seeing um, with Ace of Wands in reverse. This is really a card of victory and um, achievement and creative passion. And he, um, I, it is kind of a romantic card too. It's a very flirtatious, powerful energy for initiating new relationships. Um, when it's reversed, it can say that, you know, again, we're talking over 30 days here. For some of you, the issue has to do with creating that passion, creating that tension, that um, feeling it from the other person as well. But in order to feel it in the other person, you sometimes have to feel it in yourself. So this is an energetic, it's, it's telling me that there's issues with your own libido, there's issues with your own motivation, there's issues with your creativity. Um, how to unblock that, how to release that, how to manifest that. Um, because you may just not be feeling it. You may not be feeling it. 
All right, I'm not sure what's going on over here. We got a lot of um, ambulances going by. Calling on spirit. What are the messages and energies do you have for the sign of Aries? Please help guide them on their high spiritual path in love and in light. What do my Aries need to know regarding their love relationships? For the month of October. What does Aries need to know regarding? Okay, this card wants to come out. Gaia's garden. She says, fruition, abundance, and reaping what you sow. We all reap what we sow. It's just a fact of life. That to me reminds me a lot of the justice, excuse me, the justice card here. Okay. In Gaia's garden, you have everything you need to make your dreams come true, Aries. There is no shortage of anything, and you're constantly reminded of the law of supply. Gaia is the infinite spirit manifest in all tangible things. She represents the abundance of nature. When she comes to you as your ally, she invites you to partake of all the blessings of life. There will always be enough for everyone. Success comes to you from the fruits of your intentions. And all is well with the world as a result. This is also a sign to remind you to give thanks and maintain an attitude of humility and gratitude as your greatest good now manifests for you. Gaia's gifts are sweeter when you share them with others. And as a challenger, when Gaia appears in this challenging position in her garden, she gently points out that you've forgotten to give back to the world. Or perhaps you've become lazy, expecting fruit to fall from the, from the tree while you rest below its leaves. Gardens require tending, water, and food for the soil. Everything you have within you is needed in the world, so don't underestimate the power of what you have to offer. Timely effort is called for when Gaia challenges you to help in her garden. So ask now what you will get, but what you can give. You'll be pleasantly surprised by this change of perception. Be careful not to procrastinate too much, or the window of your current opportunity might close. Yet even if you do miss this one, as long as you're willing to help in the garden, you will most certainly see another. All right. Beautiful message, Aries. I like that it speaks to really uh, the law of abundance and the law of attraction. Um, and also just it's, it's just saying that you, you get what you give and if you've properly tended your garden, your spiritual garden, that you will reap the rewards of those efforts. But if you've neglected it and are expecting things to be handed to you, um, and again, we have to relate this back to our relationships, to our love life, that, yeah, relationships do come with hard work. So, obviously, for the majority of you, this card is coming as an ally, saying that you've worked hard and that you have everything you need to be successful and uh, to thrive. So live in your, live in abundance, live in fruition, and remember that we all reap what we sow in life. So everything is happening to us for a reason. When we accept the things that we cannot change, and we accept that we've gotten ourselves 
to where we are based on our choices that allows us to move forward on our path and with responsibility and acceptance can come change and growth and new opportunities. So I think it's a positive message for you. I hope you've enjoyed this reading. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and be sure to leave me a comment. I read all my comments and I'll see you guys soon, hopefully for the mid-month general forecasts over on Patreon. So stay tuned for those. Take care. Bye-bye.